Hello and welcome back to the Botanis Garden Club. I'm Pam. And I'm Elka. And we are so happy to have you back and watching the Botanis Garden Club. If you're a regular viewer, well, welcome back. And if you're new to the Botanis Garden Club, we're very happy to see you here. It's something that we do every Thursday. Yes. And we like to talk about plants because uh, we're well known in the industry as plant pushers, right? And, and fun havers. <laughs> That's right. We do like to have a lot of fun. And we've been doing a series uh, of, from our spring catalog focusing on what we call our faves. Every year, every season, uh, Wendy, myself, and Elka choose our favorites for the season. And this day, we're going to be talking with Elka about mm -hmm. her faves. Last time it was all about Wendy. That's right. Now it's all about me. Yay! Everybody gets <laughs> their day. It's kind of like your birthday. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so um, what I did actually is I, um, I was asked to pick a few things that I really like that mm -hmm. I would consider my faves, which is very difficult because Basically everything in the catalog is my <laughs> fave. But I went through my garden and I thought I need different things. I need mm -hmm. something for for shade. I need something for a ground cover. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do I need? And so I, I basically went through the whole thing and just covered my right. whole garden. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I like about your choices, particularly this season. Because yeah. it's kind of like you've got the entire garden covered. <laughs> so, And you know, gardeners may not always have a sunny spot. They might have shade. They might have an area that, you know, they require a drought tolerant plant. But Elka's faves really uh, cover everyone so I'm sure there'll be something there for each one of you that will stick out and you'll go hmm I think I'd like to try that particular one exactly uh, one of the um, the things that I realized is was that uh, I was very well covered with the mid to late season or actually mm -hmm. the main the main season yeah but uh, it lacked a little bit in the early Right, like early and late. You know, I want to stretch it out and I want to make sure that, uh, you know, something comes up very early mm -hmm. and also when the season kind of starts dying back that I still have flowers to go. Exactly. And that was that, that was basically my focus. So I started with a very early one mm -hmm. and that is the Hammer Callis Night Embers. Mm -hmm. And Hammer Callis are also known as Daylilies. A daylily. That's right. But it's interesting because the Hammer Callis, the flowers itself are not considered early blooming. No. Right? Mm -hmm. They're more of a mid bloomer. But what I love, and I know you love too, it is the amazing thing about Hemercalis is they're almost like two plants in one mm -hmm. because that foliage starts to come up really exactly, early. Exactly, exactly. You know what, when, when I drive to work or when I just look at, at plants in the spring, everything is still, you see a lot of soil, It's everything mm -hmm. is pretty, or snow. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, then you start driving and a lot of time, the first things that are coming up, the green little mm -hmm. pit uh, uh, tips that come out is the Hemercalis. Yeah. So I do like that early, green yeah. patch that you see and then later obviously in the in the mid to late season you still get mm -hmm. the flowers but that early green that yeah. comes up is something yeah. that I really appreciate yes. in the spring. Absolutely well here on the west coast actually you know when the tulips and daffodils start to come up that's when your hemerocallis is starting to grow and it's a very beautiful lime green grassy foliage yeah. very very uh, once it's established in your garden they're beautiful tufts of green mm -hmm. but what I love about this night embers are those flowers my gosh Elka beautiful Super color. double. Oh double double <laughs> yeah double double and 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 fragrant as well and that beautiful rich uh, scarlet red color mm -hmm. with that beautiful picotty yellow on the edge I mean you've chosen a really awesome plant and the best thing is it's super easy to grow which is actually an indication if you see it somewhere planted by the city Yes, it's pretty much uh, <laughs> very easy to grow because they don't have time to pamper these uh, plants a lot. So mm -hmm. they usually choose plants that are really drought tolerant. They are really just easy to grow. So yeah. that's that was one of the main reasons I actually chose that. Too. Right. So you've, we've got the first part of the season covered with that beautiful foliage, and then the mid part of your summer season with those beautiful flowers that will, you know, come every day. Day lily, get it? That's mm -hmm. why they come back well, every day. They're producing more and more flowers, like a little flower factory. But we all. Also love to finish up the season. Often at the end of the season, things are dying down. And by end of season, we mean autumn. Yes. Yeah. Yep. The autumn season, things are dying back. There's not a lot of stuff in bloom, but you've chosen one oh, gorgeous yeah. flower. Oh yeah, it's the dahlia, mm -hmm. and uh, and there's a beautiful one called Madame, mm -hmm. Ma Madam, so Madam, <laughs> Madame, 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 yeah. painted Madame actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I could uh, I could give you a list of all the dahlias because dahlias 
in just as a grouping yeah. is something that I really like yeah. uh, because dahlias are again super easy to grow mm -hmm. they are super as a cut flower because the more you cut the more they make like little side uh, buds and yes. make more flowers which yeah. is hello I'm a florist I like to cut and snip yeah. uh, and uh, and also because they are so late mm -hmm. that when a lot of stuff in my garden is already died down and mm -hmm. it's getting a little bit fallish or uh, autumnal uh, yeah autumnal, <laughs> autumnal yes uh, then I still have my dahlias and yeah. the 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 painted madame mm -hmm. madam mm -hmm. you know I don't even know how exactly. <laughs> it's like potato potato exactly <laughs> tomato tomato uh, I just love the flowers yes uh, so uh, it's a beautiful yellow flower mm -hmm. and it has these splots of, yeah, of splashes reds. of streaks of, of, of almost like a red. pinky red mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, each flower is unique and because it's a decorative daily the flower heads are fairly large so you are going to get a lot of flower for your for your investment and dahlias as Elka said bloom you know usually starting sometime in late summer early autumn and will continue until that very first frost exactly yeah. and if you dig them up and store them yeah. and plant them the following season, you will have yourself a beautiful perennial plant. Although it's not winter hardy, you can still get them to come back year oh, after year. Oh, absolutely. And it's very, very easy. Mm -hmm. You know, you give them one day of frost so mm -hmm. that the leaves turn black. Yes. And then you lift them out, mm -hmm. shake them, dry them, dry them up a little bit, put yeah. them in a cardboard box. Yeah. And then you have a beautiful plant next year again. For next so spring it's, to it's plant. quite an easy one. Yeah. So then I moved on and I needed a, um, a ground cover. Mm -hmm. I wanted something that mm -hmm. covers the ground, yeah. which is the Galteria procumbens. Mm. Big name, but it yeah. also has a common name. Yes, wintergreen or winterberry. And the reason for that is, is if you actually take the foliage or those beautiful red berries mm -hmm. yeah. from a Galteria procumbens and just kind of crush it and smell it, it smells like wintergreen, like uh, like chewing gum or mm -hmm. or that wintergreen scent that you can sometimes exactly. get as air fresheners. It's it's pretty cool actually, and I love it too because of the foliage and the berries. Yes, I actually the the first time I really uh, loved it mm -hmm. was I saw it in pots because mm -hmm. it grows very well in pots, and it's a beautiful little decorative piece in front of your house mm -hmm. uh, around Christmas time because yeah. of the red berries you can put a little uh, um, a red ribbon in in there yeah. and a, a cool terracotta pot or some a basket or mm -hmm. something and it just has that winter foliage and yeah. also the uh, the berries and it just it just makes makes it Christmasy a yeah. little bit so and it's nice, nice. And, it's nice and hardy to a zone Absolutely. three Absolutely, yes. so yeah. it's something now as you said it's a ground cover it's not necessarily considered invasive anyway in fact I would Consider it pretty of a almost a, a bit of a slow grower, but because it is such a low growing plant, it spreads. Yeah, nicely there, I like yeah. it in containers best. I mm -hmm, really do. Mm -hmm. I think it looks really pretty, and you can place them anywhere that you want in your garden, so that you can really enjoy those beautiful red berries. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So another easy one. So yeah. no no worries there. <laughs> yeah. Now let's move to the shady part of the garden mm -hmm. because you chose a beautiful one for that. And of course, I do love the shady areas in the hot summer. It's a nice place to relax and enjoy, and that beautiful plant that you've chosen. Chosen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, for the shady plant, um, I chose the Dicentra spectabilis alba, mm -hmm. bleeding heart. Right. This time the alba, meaning white, mm -hmm. and probably people know by now that I really love white flowers, mm -hmm. uh, but especially in the shade because yeah. the white also shines a little yes. more. I mean, the 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 regular spectabilis. Um, the Dicentra is usually it's kind of a pinkish mm -hmm. and there's a little dot of, of uh, white on there too right. but the white flowers of the Alba really stands out yeah. in the shade. I think they are so graceful and so beautiful that stem that arches mm -hmm. and then you've got these little tiny white hearts that grow all along it and in the shady part of the garden as you said that white really stands out against that nice bright green foliage very easy to grow very easy to maintain. It's a plant that comes back year after year without much fuss or muss. It does like a shady area, so keep that in mind. Yeah. But also in containers works yeah. actually very well in containers. Yeah. The nice thing is, it is it's also a, a plant that completely dies back. Mm -hmm. So after it's done in the fall, it gets cold. It just disappears. Mm -hmm. You don't have to care at all about it. You leave it in the ground. You cover it up maybe a little bit if it depends on how you uh, handle your garden in the mm -hmm. winter. And then in spring, it comes up and it just it grows relatively fast. You know, as soon as the sun hits the soil, it comes. Yeah comes up like crazy and then yeah. these unbelievably 
I mean, it's it's quite amazing. Yeah, the, the, it's a real heart that's yeah. hanging on there. Yeah, it, I, for me, it's almost a little zen looking. Yes, yeah. That's Children love. would love it because mm -hmm. you know that association between the, what the flower actually looks like and its common name of bleeding heart is is so easily recognizable. It's a very fun plant to grow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, exactly. you certainly did cover all the garden I covered there. Covered it all. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the sunny spots, the shady spots, the ground cover, the early bloomers, the late bloomers. Cut flowers. You got it all with Elka's faves. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're a regular viewer of the Botanist Garden Club, you know that we love to give things away and we have a contest every week. What we do is we ask you a question, we get you to email that answer to us, and then we do a draw the following day. So this week's question, I'll let Elka ask it. This week's question is, what is the common name of the hemorrhocalis? Mm, mm. Well, if you know the answer to that question, put it in an email to gardenclub at botanis.com along with your name, and we will be doing a draw tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And two very lucky winners somewhere in Canada will be receiving as their prize one of Elka's faves. Hmm, which one mm -hmm. will it be and who's going to win? Well, if you look back uh, tomorrow on our website or on our YouTube channel, you will find out who the winners are. And of course, they'll be receiving those lovely plants this spring when our shipping season begins. Well, Elka, again, another again. one. It was so much fun. It always is. I just love talking about gardening and, and the different types of plants that each one of us enjoy and encourage you to plant in your garden as well. And I sure hope that you do try one of Elka's faves this season. I guarantee that you will not be disappointed. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so until next week, thank you very much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it and we will see you and next week with another show. In the Botanus Garden Club. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.